Hey folks, welcome to Backwoods Logic number 10. In this episode, I will show you a very simple shower system, not only to be used for an off-grid cabin situation, but this would enable you to carry on some normalcy and provide you with a nice hot shower at home, even when the power goes out. I've got a lot of folks asking me what it is I use for showers at my cabin. This is the system I use. Very, very simple to put together and requires very, very little investment. So let's get rolling on that. Now anyone who has stayed in a remote cabin for an extended time or has gone camping for a long period of time, chances are already has experience with this type of shower system. These solar bags are pretty handy. Use them on a temporary basis, they're great. Uh, you fill them with water, stick them out in the sun, they will heat up to an adequate shower temperature. What I dislike about these the most is when you're trying to use it in like an off-grid living situation where you're going to use it on a daily basis, these are a pain in the butt. I used a shower bag like this for a few years with my first cabin, and like I said, on a daily basis, you'll find that trying to fill these things sometimes is a real pain. A lot of times it's easier to have a second set of hands to hold it open so the water just doesn't spill all over the place. But what I really don't like is you have to hang this so high above your head, otherwise you're on your hands and knees trying to take a shower. Really, really annoying. Now I have cut the tube on some of these in the past. It's helped a little bit, but still with a normal ceiling height, still I can't get enough height out of it. I've got to crouch down beneath it. Now, if you're about four and a half feet tall, you'd be fine. But for someone six foot tall, it's just a pain in the butt. So after using that for a while, I started experimenting. I bought one of these little two and a half gallon bottles. They call it a carboy. I don't know why. Uh, if you look these up online, uh, search the term carboy. I bought this one from the Uline company, um, and I just love the darn thing. It's got a big filler cap, breather hole. You can make minute adjustments with the flow. They're more than an adequate shower. Normal ceiling height, not a problem. I put a little shelf over my shower, tuck it right up there. Even at six foot tall, with a normal ceiling height, I can get beneath the darn thing, take my shower, not a problem at all. When you let air into the breather cap, you'd be surprised at the water pressure you get out of this thing. Just a wonderful thing, and everything I dislike about the shower bags has now been removed from the equation. I've been using this type of shower system for a long time now, and I'm just thrilled to death with it. Very simple, very small investment, and a very, very adequate shower. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a stripe of electrical tape here. And then I'm going to spray paint the jug and then peel the tape away. And that will give me a sight window so I can see how much water is left in the jug when I'm taking a shower. A black bottle will reach comfortable shower temperatures when placed on a dark metal surface like this black painted wash tub. Now one thing about this type of a shower is it's foolproof. It's, nothing's going to fail. It requires no electricity, no pumps. You just need to be able to heat your water and you have a good hot shower. If your electricity is out, you can't use your electric burner. You have a propane burner, fabulous. You could build a fire. If you don't have a fire pit or firewood, using the little rocket stove that I showed you how to make. Just anybody can go out and pick up a handful of twigs, your backyard, little woodlot somewhere, side of the road, anywhere. You find little twigs and pine cones all over the ground. And that is all that is required with that rocket stove. If you're unfamiliar with what I'm talking about, just look further back in my channel and you will see a video where I show you how to build a rocket stove. So hot water, a bottle, and you're good to go. Now, 
if you don't have a shower stall in your cabin, an outdoor shower is just the most refreshing shower I've ever had. At my other cabin, I have a little spot outside where you can be in private. I have a little shelf to hang the bottle up. Nice hot shower out in the open air. That's the most refreshing way to go, I'll tell you what. So both of my cabins are going to be set up with an indoor and an outdoor shower. I have my bottle. I've got my wash pan. And I'm good to go. Now what I have for the homestead here is just a little piece of plywood. It fits in the corner above the shower. And these are just cheap little pipe clamps that I screwed on here. And they just hook on to the trim that goes around the shower edge. And this prevents it from falling off. That's all. The shelf just hooks right on the trim like that. The little clips keep the shelf from slipping off. And I can just stick my bottle up there, open the valve, take a shower, even when the power's out. Like I said, as long as you have a way of heating the water, it's all you need. Now these little clips keep that shelf from falling down. I would never put a shelf up there and have that water bottle on top of it without having some sort of clip to hold it in place or maybe some sheetrock screws coming down through the top or some way to fasten it there. If it fell down, it would put a hole in your shower, probably break your foot, okay? You don't need that. So these little clips clip right on the back of this trim here and it works just great for me. I have quite a few of these bottles. I find them very handy to have around the cabin. I'm going to go ahead and throw this up on the step ladder just to demonstrate the amount of water pressure you can get out of this bottle here. Now generally when I'm soaping up, I'll just run this at about half speed. And you can see it has a nice spray. I don't need to have any type of a shower head on it at all. And I'll run it at that speed while I'm soaping up and rinsing off and generally I can be all soaped up and rinsed off when by the time the water level reaches about here uh, on a nice sunny day sometimes I'll put two or three of them out on the hood of my vehicle or in that black wash tub like I showed you uh, let mother nature do the work then in the afternoon I get nice hot water to take my shower do my dishes all that stuff simple and cheap man and that's what backwards living is all about now there's all kinds of different systems available now for heating your water. There's small on-demand water heaters you can find in like Cabela's catalog. There might be a couple hundred dollars, I'm not sure. Uh, something like that, you're gonna need to run a pump so you'll be running off your battery bank. You'll also be burning some propane. I mean, that's all fine and dandy, but for me, it's not an inconvenience for me to heat my water. It doesn't take long to heat that much water to take a shower with. Winter time, I always have kettles of water on the wood stove. I always have hot water available. Sunny days in the summertime, I have my bottles outside and they're heating up anyway. Uh, sometimes I'll have two or three of these bottles out on the hood of the vehicle or in the wash tub. Then in the afternoon, I have all the hot water I need to take a shower, do my dishes and all of that, all provided by Mother Nature, and that tickles me. Generally, my perfect shower temperature is 108 degrees. If it's 105, it's doable. I like it a little warmer than that. And if it's 110, it's just a little bit too hot for me. 108 is just the perfect shower temperature for me. And I have a routine. It's not hard for me to reach that perfect 108. Uh, what I do is I heat my water. I generally know about how long, how, which kettle I'm using, etc. Like I said, it's just developing a routine. And then I stick my little candy thermometer in the bottle. And, uh... I can pretty much get it right to where I need it. It's not hard to do so. Now I have a bottle sitting out on the Jeep here. I put it out maybe 1230 today. It's around 5, 530 now. Let's see how that's doing. That bottle is really hot. It is just mind-blowing, the power of the sun.
Oh, it's climbing. Holy moly. It's actually a little bit too hot for my shower. The combination between the color black and the power of the sun, you can really generate some heat. Just amazing. I just set that up there overhead. I open up that little air vent on the top of the jug so it'll drain nicely. I'm just going to let that cool off for a little bit, huh? And then take a shower in a few minutes. Kind of funny, you got too hot in the sun. <laughs> so again, even if you don't have any intentions of living out in the woods, being able to provide your family with a nice hot shower during a major power outage, well, that's just good backwoods logic. <laughs> yes, sir.